I'd like to welcome you if you're new to the channel. I'm Danny with Escape Power Sports and today we're going to be adding some basic maintenance videos to our step-by-step how-to video playlist for your KTM four-stroke dirt bike. And in this video we'll be showing the step-by-step -step procedure on how to change the transmission fluid, also known as the gearbox oil, in this KTM 530. Before we get started, feel free to pause the video here to see the parts, tools, and beers required to get this straightforward three beer job done. And I'm sure this procedure will be similar, if not identical, for other four-stroke KTMs, but as always, be sure to refer to your owner's manual for your specific bike, as it is the best source of information for these maintenance jobs, and no video no matter how good it is, should replace the book. Let's get started. So the KTM manual says we need to start this job with the bike warmed up and on a fairly level surface or dirt bike stand. And grab a suitable container to drain our oil into, in this case a chopped in half $2 Walmart bucket. And I like to turn this little knob counterclockwise to remove the skid plate so it doesn't get covered in oil. Now if your bike is like mine, you'll notice two drain plugs sticking out towards the back on the bottom of the case. Now that 13 millimeter bolt you see there on the left is actually for the engine oil. So in this video we'll focus our attention to the one on the right, which is our transmissions gear oil screen. But if you missed our engine oil change video and need to see how to do that, there'll be links to the rest of our full KTM maintenance video series in the description below. Now let's come back to the trainee's oil screen under the bike shortly, because the book tells us to locate and remove the transmission's 13 millimeter drain plug first. And you should see it on the left, or the driver's side of the motor, directly below the front sprocket and shift lever, right here. And with this 13 millimeter drain plug removed, the majority of the trainee fluid will drain right out. And we can climb back under the bike to get at that 13 millimeter gearbox oil screen we mentioned earlier. And remembering the gearbox oil screen is the 13 millimeter bolt on the right, we can go ahead and remove it. And the book says once it's out, we need to go ahead and inspect it for any excessive metal or debris before we thoroughly clean it with parts cleaner or a magnet if that's what you got handy. And a quick side note, this brake and parts cleaner is some pretty serious chemical stuff. So I like to wear rubber gloves to protect our skin, and it probably would have been smarter to go ahead and remove any rubber o-rings temporarily so they don't get damaged. So with the screen cleaned and the gearbox's oil finished draining, we can wipe the seal and surface clean and carefully reinstall it into the motor. And it really should thread on easily and smoothly by hand. You really don't want to cross thread it or over tighten, as this could cause a leak or worse, strip the threads in the case. And since the manual says this bolt only needs 20 newton meters or 14.8 foot pounds of torque, I just choked up on my little 13 millimeter wrench and just got it good and snug. No need to over tighten by bearing down on it with a ratchet or anything like that. So with our screen reinstalled, the KTM book also mentions that the drain plug itself is actually a small magnet that should also be inspected for any excessive metal shavings before being thoroughly cleaned and reinstalled in the same manner as the screen. And again, we'll go in carefully by hand at first before torquing the bolt to the correct 20 newton meters or 14.8 foot pounds of torque specified in this machine's owner's manual. And at this point in the job, it's a perfect opportunity to crack another beer while we locate the gear oil's fill cap. It's on the left side of the engine, just above the front sprocket on this bike. And I like to ensure the surrounding area is clean before I remove this fill cap so I don't drop any crud directly in the tranny. So as far as which type of oil to use, the book calls for KTM's 10W50 motorcycle oil depending on temperatures. And there's a raging debate out there on the forums with some guys running that and others running Rotella's diesel oil, which I happen to like in my Can-Am V-Twins, and a variety of other suitable options for the best oil to use out there. I happen to have a couple bottles of Mobile One's full synthetic 10W40 motorcycle racing oil, so that's what I use for this oil change, since Mobile One is a brand I like and trust. And I know since it's a motorcycle oil designed for wet clutches, there won't be any issues with the clutch slipping once we get out there on the trail. So I went ahead and added the specified 0.9 liters or 0.95 quarts the book called for, and sprayed down the drain plug and oil screen areas with some degreaser and hosed off the mess to make checking for leaks easier. And followed that up with letting the bike idle on a level stand so the oil could circulate into all the transmission's cavities, giving us an accurate check of the transmission's oil level. And KTM made it really easy to ensure our training fluid is at the correct level by providing this oil level check screw on the right side of the engine. And if the bike ain't too dirty, you should be able to see this little screw hiding between the rear brake pedal and the right side engine cover. So this check screw takes a Torx T30 star bit to unscrew it, but if you don't have one of those handy, you can get away with an 8mm. And when we remove it, a small amount of oil should drain out. 
So with this sort of fill it till it spills check screw, if no fluid comes out, we'll need to go back and add some until a little bit does spill out of this screw. And on the other hand, if we had slightly overfilled it, it will just drain out of this little check screw, making it very easy to get this bike to the correct level of transmission fluid, which I think is really cool. Now just reinstall the skid plate and hell, we're done. So I really hope you found some of the information in this how-to video helpful for your KTM dirt bike. And if you did find it helpful, do me a quick favor and give the video a thumbs up. And of course, as always, if it wasn't helpful or if I missed anything or you have any thoughts or suggestions on how I can improve these videos or really any comments on this topic in general, please leave a comment in the section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd like to welcome you if you're new to the channel. I'm Danny with Escape Power Sports. I really want to thank y'all for watching. And as always, we'll see y'all on the trail.